Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Kelly and this is a channel about puzzles. Today is the second part of my Ravensburger Disney Museum 9,000 piece puzzle series. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, you can check it out right here. And I encourage you to go and watch that video and then come back and watch this one. So you might be wondering, where is the puzzle? Well, this is the puzzle right here on 10 poster boards. Like I mentioned in my first video, I don't really have the space to put it all out and work on it in one big piece. So this is my solution. It's working pretty well. Actually, I do prefer it for a puzzle of this size. I don't think I would be able to work on it if it was all laid out on the floor. And like I mentioned in my first video, there are some hazards with having it on the floor from my cat. So this is the best solution for me. However, I have found her sleeping on this a few times, but she's learned her lesson. Let's talk about how the puzzle is going. So I'm shooting this video three weeks after I started the puzzle. That is of course longer than I said I would take for the puzzle or longer than I thought I would take for the puzzle. I think pretty quickly once I started the puzzle, I realized it was going to take a lot longer than I thought. The flooring of the puzzle, this section right here, which, you know, in this image doesn't seem that big, but actually in itself, it's probably close to 700 pieces. It's, it ended up taking me five or six hours to do, which was a complete surprise. So that really, knocked my confidence for a while but once I started on the portraits I was able to regroup it's just a lot of puzzle to do I still stand by what I said in that it's not a difficult image to do but just the sheer size of it and the number of pieces just makes it very difficult so this is three weeks since I started the puzzle today I posted the first video in this series I think I'm making good progress. It's been three weeks, however, I think I've only worked on it for about half of those days. And then some of those days, it was a good, probably close to eight hours that I worked on the puzzle, but then there's also a lot of days where it was just, you know, one to three hours in the evening when I had a chance to. So I have unfortunately lost track of how much time I've been working on this puzzle. I am doing a time lapse on my GoPro up here that you can't see that will be able to give me an idea. Once I'm finished the puzzle, I'll be able to calculate roughly how much time I've done. So that will give me a better idea. So in the last video, I'll do a kind of breakdown of how long everything took. At the end of the second weekend, I actually laid out all the poster board on the floor and laid out all the portraits where they were in the puzzle currently just to kind of get an idea of where I was at within the puzzle because when it's stacked in this stack of poster boards, it's kind of hard to visualize how much of the puzzle I'm finishing. Right now, it doesn't feel like I have that many pieces left. Other than the pieces on the table, this is how many pieces I have left. So, in guessing this is probably 2,000? That's a complete guess though, it's really hard to judge. I would say it's about, I have 2,000 pieces left. And it is of course, all the gold frames and all the blue pieces. I did record laying out all the puzzle, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And after putting the puzzle together, it was a bit upsetting because it really felt like I hadn't done as much progress as I thought I did. But mo at that point, most of the pictures were still missing their frames. So when you look at the picture of the puzzle, the frames do actually take up a large portion of the, of the image and I hadn't done a lot of work on the frames at that point. Since doing that, I am done most of the frames. The only frames I have left are the complicated ones that have the really intricate patterns like on Snow White here, on Bambi, and these circular ones. So these are the ones 
that I have left. These are the ones I'm working on right now. There are a few pieces here and there that are missing from almost every single portrait, but that just kind of happens with a puzzle of this size. They're somewhere here. If I come across something rather than searching for it in the pile, I'm just putting it into one of my sorters. And then once I get a good amount of pieces in that sorter for other portraits, then I can kind of go through and add those pieces in where they're missing. And I've done that quite a few times as well. I've also started connecting the portraits a bit. Some that are almost finished or practically finished, the edge of the frames kind of start to connect. So I have started doing that on some of them. And that definitely has helped to make it feel like I'm closer to being done the puzzle, which is great. So for this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of walk you through my process that I've done for each portrait or each group of portraits. Some of them have quite similar frames. And in two weeks, we'll have another video with me finishing the frames, finishing all the blue areas, and finally assembling the puzzle, which I'm very excited to do. Sleeping Beauty, got Rapunzel, Ursula's in progress. I think a lot of these pieces, all these middle pieces here, I think they're actually in the box that has all the blue pieces that I thought were background. So I think once I start going through that box, I will find the rest of these. Um, I got Minnie, Winnie the Pooh, the Red Queen, and Pinocchio's making good progress. There's still a lot of pieces missing from him, but I think that I will get to them soon as I keep going through the rest of the pieces. And here's the Little Mermaid, just been working on her tail so far. I think the red pieces here are all her hair and then the rest are kind of all mixed together, but I will probably focus on something else now. As you can see here, are the rest of all the pieces for the portraits. It seems like a lot, but I feel like I'm making good progress.
honest, laying it all out, it doesn't feel like I've gotten an, as much done as I had initially thought. It is going to be about 10 centimeters shorter than this is across. And I think there's probably like that much space at the bottom for up and down. So it's a pretty big puzzle. All these pictures of frames, as you can see on the ones I'm already working on, and then there's lots of blue wall in between. So it's, it's slow going, but I'm working on it. This one is at the top of the puzzle, as you can see, because it has one of the lights in it. I found this one to be particularly challenging, mostly because it was really hard to find pieces for it. This is one of the last ones I put together. Um, as a picture, it's fine, but when you look at it on an individual piece level, each piece is quite different, and it's really hard to look for pieces when each one is going to be a completely different color. The only thing I was really able to pick out initially was the green sleeves. Once I had finished most of the portraits and I only had a few pieces left, it was a lot more obvious what I needed for this one. So then I was able to put it together. And then for the frame, this one, because it has two edges that have the shadow along the edge here, that was a lot easier to pick out. There's another portrait that has a quite similar frame. So these pieces were really easy to spot, as well as the braid that kind of runs around the portrait. All of these frames that have like the lines of across and down, those ones are quite easy to spot. And then having the light as well made it a bit easier to find that section. And then in terms of the overall puzzle, this one is actually on the inside edge. So if I was doing it in two pieces, Rather than as one, it would be on the, the middle edge of the puzzle. So next we have this Ursula one. She's quite a presence. For a scale, you can see she fills the whole frame here. And on the picture, that's about how much she takes up. So about half of one half, so about a quarter of the puzzle. And of course, this one is at the top of the picture so it's got some lights in it as well which helped to kind of build it together. Um, a lot of the blue pieces ended up in my blue piece pile when I was first sorting. I did have to dig through that bin for quite a few missing pieces. I have still a few more pieces that I need to find. I'm sure they're there. I'll find them eventually. Um, this frame as well, initially it was quite difficult but there, I was able to find all the pieces that have this kind of striped border throughout. 
pattern here. There is at least one other puzzle that has the same design, but that kind of made it a bit easier, and then you can kind of build off it, especially where it's diagonal, makes it a bit easier to find everything. I'm missing a lot of pieces down here still, however, there is another picture underneath it, which actually I think is this one. Yeah, I wonder if they connect. Hey, look at that! Progress in the puzzle. Which means that this one, which is next to it, connects as well. Excellent. That makes it feel like it's almost done. So here's my hand for scale, kind of as big as Simba. And then there is Simba. So that can kind of give you the idea of how big the puzzle is compared to the image on the box. So for these two smaller puzzles, Mini was quite easy to find um, because it wasn't a painted puzzle. It didn't have this texture. I'm not sure if it picks up on camera. So this one has a texture and this one has a texture as well, but this one didn't have that. There's a few puzzles that didn't have this texture and they really stuck out compared to the other ones. So that made it a bit easier to gather them. And then for the frames for this one, both of these puzzles have this kind of distinctive pattern along the edge of the portrait. And there are also a few more portraits that have this same design. And so that I was able to pick out those and kind of build up a section of those. And then once I had a section built, then it was a lot easier to figure out what puzzle they go to. But I am still missing a lot of little pieces for these ones. I know they're in the box somewhere because this section here it kind of has this design on it and those ones are quite easily confused with the more intricate frames so that makes it a bit more difficult. I suspect these ones might be in my pile of ones that go to portraits so I will have to come back to those. So here we have this Winnie the Pooh and the Red Queen. So here they are. So again, these two, this one in particular, I found that the pieces really popped out when I was going through the pieces. So this one was quite easy to find. Um, even though it has texture, it's still quite distinctive. Um, and then same with the Winnie the Pooh, because this is quite a dotted texture, it really popped out and I was able, these I think were the first two that I finished. And then you can also see that they have the same type of frame and it's a quite distinctive style. It was pretty easy to find these pieces. Still searching for a few more, but overall it was pretty easy to find those ones. And they are the, probably the most complete other than I think two other ones. So that's going great. Um, I think that there is just one piece that separates them based on the picture. It looks like it's just going to be, it looks like it's just one piece. So I'm looking for blue pieces that might have just a little bit of brown and a little bit of gold. So I'm sure I'll find those eventually. I do have a little piece floating here. I think this piece actually goes right here, but I just don't have anything to stick it to right now. Yeah. And here we have Ariel. She's one that is connected to the top of the frame. This one was quite difficult with the all well, the green pieces being the same, but obviously I was able to put it together not too difficultly. A lot of these pieces I think are in the box still with the other blue pieces so they'll come up eventually and then in terms of the frame this is the only frame that has these bubbles on them on it 
So it's pretty easy to, whenever I came across those, I could grab them for this, this frame. And then this one also had a distinctive, I don't really know what you call it, but kind of a cup pattern, maybe. It's hard to see, but that goes all the way around. And there's a few other that a few others that have that same pattern as well. So again, those are ones that I could pull out all the pieces and put them together in just in sections. And then once they were put together, it's pretty easy to figure out what puzzle, what portrait they belong to. And then this one as well has this. It almost feels like a glitter border. It's not. It's just dots. But that was really distinctive as well when looking through the gold pieces. Almost just done this one. I think this one connects to Mulan, actually. Yeah. So that is a Mulan edge piece. So technically I could connect these two, but they won't, it won't fit on one of the boards right now. If I connect this to the Mulan, it'll go off the edge here, which I don't want to do just yet. Here we have Tinkerbell. This one was really nice to do. And this one has a really unique border, so you can see it's lots of little details and then also like these lines that go all the way down is quite distinctive. And there isn't any other frames that have a design like this. So it was pretty easy whenever I came across something like that, I could just put it aside because I knew it was for Tinkerbell. And of course still missing a few pieces, but they're in there somewhere. And this one, actually, there's a bunch of pieces missing up here, but this is actually directly below the Simba piece. So this part actually fits in here. Yeah, so it will, it'll go together like that. So still a few pieces that need to be found to go here. Until I start taping the boards together, I don't really have enough board space to put too many of the sections together. Um, but as I'm going through this, I'm finding that more and more sections will connect. So it might be almost time to start putting everything together. How do you feel about that, Mango? Yeah. Here's the Beauty and the Beast one. And you can see that this one has the same design along the edge of the frame that these two have, or quite similar anyway. So these were another ones that I could pull out pretty easily. And then I'm having trouble with this middle section in between. It's kind of hard to find the pieces that fit here. Same with these ones, just because they're really dark. I think the pieces really look like they belong somewhere else. But as I'm finding them, I'm putting them here. I think this piece belongs over here, actually. Yeah, so that one's slow going. It's coming together, though. So this one, of course, is quite distinct. It's the kind of graphic novel style. So that one was really easy to spot. So really easy to pull out all the pieces for this one. And then on this one, along with the Mickey one, which is here, they have a really distinctive frame. I think that is very similar to the ones I was just looking at. Um, it's got this pattern here, and then it's also got this like braided design around the inside, and then also a distinctive like shiny section along the middle. So this is one of the first frames that I've completed, almost, except for these tricky rose parts here. And of course, this one is very along the edge, so we've got the edge that'll be here eventually. And then here is Mickey. Mickey, his frame is quite similar to the other one. It just has these little Mickey heads on it as well, which again, were really easy, easy to spot, although that one is proving quite tricky. I'm sure it's here somewhere though. Actually, is that it? That is, yay! Okay. 
Okay, so that's, that one is pretty much complete. Great. And then this one lives above the Winnie the Pooh and the Red Queen. So that is probably a piece of the Winnie the Pooh. So this one could actually be connected to some more as well. And this Sleeping Beauty one, while well, it's on the edge, above it is the Lady and the Tramp one. So we can see there's some pieces here on the Lady and the Tramp portrait. Obviously this one is still very much in progress. These sections are quite difficult. We can see here, this is the top of the Sleeping Beauty picture. So again, this is another one that I could connect. Let's see what else we have here. So we also have Rapunzel. That was another one that was quite easy to spot because it is more of a comic book style. Uh, this one, again, the frames around, directly around the portrait were pretty easy because there's just a stripe. Same with this one, it was easy to spot that. These ones are easy to spot, at least in the center part, but the corners are proving quite difficult for both of these ones. They are pretty much the same design. So if we look at if we look at the box, the corners have a kind of leaf pattern to them. So when it's just the individual pieces, that makes it a bit difficult to spot them. We have Marie from the Aristocats, and this one is, is a very stylized one, so it's actually pretty difficult to figure out what pieces belong to this one compared to Dumbo. On first glance, they were quite similar. After I started working with them, I realized that the Dumbo one has quite a different texture, so it's a bit easier to spot, although I am still missing a few pieces from this one. So this one has this bump design around the edge. And this is one that I see on three or four different frames. So that was another one that it was easy to pull out and put together on their own, just in a straight line. And then I could put them together from that. And this one actually goes right into the Lady and the Tramp one. As you can see, it's already quite connected. And then above this one actually is the Little Mermaid, so you might not pick up on the camera, but there is pieces from the Little Mermaid frame on this one. So that's another one that could directly connect. So technically this one could flow from the Little Mermaid down through these two and into the Sleeping Beauty one, and they could all connect. So here we have the here we have the Bambi portrait. This one again is on the bottom edge of the frame. This frame is quite intricate, so this has been a bit of a struggle. In terms of the picture, Bambi itself was not that difficult to do. So the color is quite distinctive compared to other ones. But the background is really challenging just because it was all kind of the same color. It took quite a while to put that one together. It's very pretty though. This whole puzzle is very pretty. And then here we have Cinderella. And this is another one that had the distinctive pattern along the edge, like the other ones. This piece does not go here. I think this one might go to one of the other puzzles, actually. And this one, that this, this part is proving quite challenging. It's here somewhere. This one was really, really pretty and wasn't very difficult to do. I really love the details on the dress. I 
And here's Snow White. I'm just missing that one piece in her head, which I'm sure is with the other blue pieces. And the frame's been started. This frame has a distinctive pattern around the edge, and it's quite similar to the Jungle Book one and this Alice in Wonderland one as well. So those were all kind of built at the same time. But for the rest of their frames, here's the Alice in Wonderland one. And the, the Jungle Book one. And the Snow White one, those are also really intricate frames, so they're quite difficult. Especially because the kind of pieces you're looking at are it's very hard to see the details that are in the frame just from the individual pieces. So it's quite slow going. Alice was quite, quite distinctive as well, though I had some trouble finding her blue skirt. It kept ending up in the wrong pile. And here's a Jungle Book one. It was hard, quite hard to find the, the tree and blue, but these ones were quite easy to find. The green pieces were quite easy to spot. Right here is Tiana and Captain Hook. These two were quite small, so they were one of the last ones that I did. They have quite similar frames, so it's pretty easy to build them at the same time. Again, they have that similar style around the edge of the border as a few of the other ones do. So again, this border was kind of built at the same time as the other ones, and then I was able to figure out what puzzle they belong to. And then also because this one has this square around the picture, as well as this one, it's kind of hard to tell in the photos, but this, these two frames, the, the gold color is slightly different than the other ones. So these ones did kind of stand out against the other ones, this, along with this design that's on it was a bit different than they are on the other frames. Obviously these ones go next to each other, because they're already together. And then these ones actually connect to Pinocchio, which is right here. And Pinocchio did take quite a while to put together. I found a lot of the pieces I miscategorized, so it was I had to go searching for a lot of the pieces, and again, these are ones that are probably in the box with all the blue pieces, so I'll get to that as well. And this frame's pretty challenging. It does have this distinct pattern. I kind of, it feels almost like a DNA strand. It's not, but that's kind of like the first thing that comes to mind when I see it. So I was able to pick those out, but once we get past that, there is quite a distinctive border around it. So that's been a bit more challenging to find. This one is really cute. Here is the 101 Dalmatians one. This one, it was quite easy to spot some of the pieces because of these spots that are on the frame. They really stood out against the other gold pieces. This one has the same design as the Mulan picture. So again, with like the really distinctive stripes around the edge and then this distinctive border. Although I am still looking for some of the pieces. And this one actually connects to, I believe these pieces belong to the mini puzzle. Yeah. So that means I can connect Ursula, these two, Tinkerbell, and 101 Dalmatians. Ooh, I think we're getting close to the puzzle being finished. And here we have Jasmine from Aladdin. So this one is actually in the top right corner of the puzzle. So we've got the edge of the puzzle along here. And then you can kind of just see a bit of it, but this one actually connects to the lights. As you can see here, this one connects to the lights. So that light section is put together already, and I have confirmed that it does fit in. 
So there is a few pieces that are missing along here, but some of these are filled in by the section that has the lights. This frame has been quite challenging. It does have this distinctive pattern, which is different. A few distinctive patterns, actually. It's got this pattern here on the edge, and then this really bubbly one inside that, and then around the edge as well here, we've got a distinctive one. I guess the only issue I'm having is because the color changes quite a bit. It can be hard to figure to catch it all the time. And this one connects to the Rapunzel one. And I have already checked and this one does connect to it. So some of these, I believe, are filled in by the Rapunzel picture. And then finally, we have the Dumbo. And the Pocahontas. Pocahontas was pretty simple, although it was pretty easy to get the pieces confused with the 101 Dalmatian since it was also a grayscale. And I think I mentioned already this one, I got the pieces initially confused with the Marie abstract one. However, once I started working on it, I saw that it did have a different texture. So it was a bit easier to figure that one out. These ones, the frames are quite challenging. You can see that the only frame pieces I have, except for this one, are ones that fit with color. So that's, these are probably going to be the last two I finish. And you can see here, it's quite an intricate design for both of them. So yeah, quite challenging, but eventually, you know, this one will link up with Tinkerbell. I think I can almost connect these ones too, right? Wow, everything's starting to connect. So I've just finished going through, kind of walking you through picture by picture and telling you about it, which obviously you've just seen. And one thing I hadn't realized, because I hadn't really looked at them all as one cohesive puzzle since I, I laid it out on the floor, which is almost two weeks ago. And I've, I feel like I've actually got quite a bit done now. So that, that, that feels pretty good. Yeah, I wasn't expecting, I knew some of them could connect, but having actually looked at them all now, it does look like a lot of them will actually connect, which is great. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven frames that are the complicated ones, and those are the ones I need to do now. That is all the frames that I have left. It's just those complicated ones, plus a few bits here and there, but those ones will be pretty easy to sort out. So yeah, I do feel like I've made pretty good progress now. After I had laid it all out and looked at it, I was feeling quite discouraged. But at that point, I hadn't finished most of the frames. So now, having finished most of the frames and going through them all, I'm feeling pretty good. I had initially thought I might not be able to finish this until September. Um, I think if I can start working on it every evening, which I haven't been this past week, I think once I start working on it consistently, I should be able to maybe finish it in two weeks. I don't have any major plans coming up, so I do have time to devote to it. It really just depends on how busy I am during the day. Hopefully, by the time you're seeing this, I've actually finished the puzzle already. This video is supposed to go up in two weeks from today, so it's possible. I'm not going to... It might not be. I'm not holding myself to that. If I can get it done by the end of August, that's great. So, so right now it's July 17th. So yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'd like to do another puzzle. I'd like to do a normal size puzzle, but I have to finish this one first. I am enjoying it though, so don't worry about it. It's, I mean, I'm enjoying it. So this video has gone on long enough. So just quickly, I'd like to know what you think of my method for doing the portraits. I know some people like to sort it 
very detailed. However, I much prefer laying everything out and just kind of working my way through it. So let me know what you think of that. Let me know if you would do something different. Um, and the last video will be out in two weeks. The end is in sight. I can see the puzzle. It's starting to come together. I'm very excited about this. The next video will have obviously finishing the puzzle and then I will also have the stats for how long it took me and other information about the puzzle. And please let me know down below if there are any questions about the process of putting together the puzzle. I'd love to know what you think about the videos so far and I will see you in the next one. Bye!